Okay, today I thought I'd do a little video on my antenna matching unit. I've had a couple of emails about this from little shorts I've posted on YouTube, so I thought I'd uh, take the time to show you through the progress and where it's at. So uh, I built it into a, um, a road case, and because of that, there is actually, oh, get it up the right way, there is a lid that will go on the front and um, I haven't decided yet but I may take the control box and put the screen and the buttons where the handle is but um, I'm not sure because maybe this sits on the floor or somewhere remote and this might sit next to my um, transmitter so <clears throat> anyway um, still a bit of a work in progress always will be just like anything that I build there's two roller inductors in here and a uh, big <laughs> hiding in there Jennings um, variable uh, vacuum capacitor. These are NEMA 17 um, copies, I guess, on the back. Uh, got a bit of a ground lug, PL259 to our insulated antenna ports, which go out to my insulators in the window, and then out to the double extended ZEP, which is fed with 600 ohm ladder line. Um, a couple of things that I've implemented into this code is uh, motor ramping, particularly for the um, capacitor, because um, particularly towards the end of its travel, this can get quite heavy as it's turning. The motor ramps it up slowly. Um, I'll run you through the menus and give you an um, example of that. So we have a select menu. We can set our band. Um, actually, I'll show you that because I have um, all the usual bands here, but also uh, an initialized band, which basically either runs the motors all the way to um, zero or all the way to their limit, which is what these marks are here. So when they hit zero, they all point straight up and down. At the moment, it's um, on 40 metres, so um, that's why they're not pointing there. Um, then you can set your frequency. Um, I've got it in 50 kilohertz steps, which is um, pretty much more than enough for this particular antenna, but that's easy to change. Um, you can set the inductor position, so uh, up or down. Um, Capacitor position, and that's a, you hear it ramp there. On the fine adjust, uh, it's set really slow, but you can make it move really quick. It's just that, as I said, that gets a bit heavy and um, it can um, skip a tooth or two on the uh, belt, which then you're gonna run it back to zero. Actually, I did make this little guy up. Uh, this has got a couple of limit switches. And this is why I got the double pulleys on those motors because um, I was going to use this to track it for end stops on both ends. But I found since I've implemented in the uh, firmware in this little box, um, if there's a power outage or as soon as you make an adjustment, it writes it to a, a temporary file as an SD card in here, which stores all the band data. Um, so if the power goes out, obviously the motors aren't moving and um, this remembers where it is. It just boots back in the same position. So they're your usual things. And then once you've set your um, inductance and capacitance, you just hit enter to save and it will uh, update that on the SD card. So I'll do, um, I suppose I'll just change the, uh, the frequency here and show you how the whole thing moves. Oh, let's go to 7150. Just a bit of capacitance on that. There you go. Frequency recalled. Last state saved. Um, maybe if we go a bit higher, the inductors will move as well. No, nope, it's all capacitance on this band. Um, can get a pretty good match up to about 20 meters, but I think what I'm going to need to do is put a heavy duty relay in here to switch some capacitance on the um, transceiver side for the higher bands um i've tried putting this capacitor on the uh transceiver side um but 
this capacitor is quite large. It's actually um, 50 to 2,000 puff. And the problem with that is uh, actually really um, the minimum capacitance is really not low enough. Um, ideally, I would have a vacuum capacitor that um, went down to maybe 5 puff. But um, switching in um, uh, even about 100 puff or something on the... Uh, the transmitter side um, gets me all the way up to 10 meters so um, I can just clip it on for now but I'll probably put a big thumping kachunkin relay in there and um, have a, a section to add some capacitance in there. Now I'm thinking about um, adding this to uh, something like github if I've never done anything like that before but I know this can be this is sort of interesting to some people who like to play with radio and antennas and things like that um so thinking about um uh, opening it up to the community as well because i'm sure that there's uh people out there smarter than me that could improve on the design a lot this is still i still call this early days so um you know it's it's always a work in progress but if uh you had a saw what it looked like um even 12 hours ago it was all just sort of screwed to a bit of ply which it kind of still is but um it will get improved Anyway, that's it. That's the uh, balanced L uh, unit and um, controlled by Arduino um, just with a CNC stepper um, kit, I guess you call it, off eBay um, and an SD card to store the band data. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions um, or comments, leave them in the uh, um, leave them in the comments below. I'd be interested to know. Uh, what you think or if you've got any ideas um i've certainly got some ideas um incorporating perhaps a swr bridge in there um this is very very repeatable so far but um uh, ground conditions and things can change when it when it range and when we change uh season and stuff so it might be nice to be able to um have some sort of default positions that are saved but um perhaps it can um have a bit of a carrier or something and auto tune but anyway we'll work that out that's for another day still early stages anyway hope you've enjoyed the video hope um this has answered some people's questions because uh, i have received a few emails about this uh seven threes and uh, take care